the queen bee is the biggest lie in nature. We picture a ruler, a monarch sitting on a throne, dictating her will. This is completely wrong. The truth is far stranger, more intelligent, and more brutal. A beehive is not a kingdom, it's a superorganism. It is a single, decentralized consciousness with tens of thousands of bodies, and the individual bee is nothing more than a single, disposable cell. What you think is a community is actually a single, thinking entity. Let's start by destroying the myth of the queen. The queen does not rule. She is a biological prisoner, an egg slave to the colony. Her sole function, forced upon her by the workers, is to lay up to 2,000 eggs per day. She is physically incapable of doing anything else. She can't even feed herself. She is constantly surrounded by attendants who feed, groom, and clean her. Who truly holds the power? The female workers. They decide everything. They decide when the queen has grown too old or weak. And when that day comes, they execute a brutal, calculated plan. They raise several new potential queens at once, feeding them a special substance called royal jelly. The first virgin queen to hatch immediately seeks out her sisters, still trapped in their cells, and stings them to death. If two hatch at once, they fight to the death. The colony doesn't serve a queen, it manufactures a new one, ensuring the survival of the collective's genes. So, if the workers are in charge, how does a decentralized government of 50,000 individuals make a single decision? They use one of the most sophisticated forms of communication on Earth. It's called the waggle dance. When a forager bee finds a fantastic source of nectar, she doesn't just come home excited. She performs a precise encoded dance on the vertical surface of the honeycomb. This isn't just follow me, this is a sentence. The angle of the dance, relative to the vertical line of the comb, tells the other bees the exact direction to fly, calculated relative to the current position of the sun, the duration of the waggle. Part of the dance dictates the exact distance. A one-second waggle might mean one kilometer away. This is abstract thought. This is symbolic language. The bee is communicating GPS coordinates. She even shares the quality of the food source by the enthusiasm of her dance, allowing the colony to allocate its workforce to the most profitable flower patch. This dance isn't just for food, it's for democracy. When a hive becomes too crowded, the colony must split in two, a process called swarming. The old queen and about half the workers leave to find a new home, but how do they choose one? This is where the magic happens. They don't just follow the queen, they launch a real estate convention. Hundreds of scout bees fly out in all directions, searching for new locations, a hollow tree, a cave. When a scout finds a promising spot, she returns to the swarm, now clustered on a branch, and performs her waggle dance. She dances for the location she found, but other scouts are dancing for their locations. A democratic debate begins, Bees will watch several dances, then go inspect the locations for themselves. If a bee agrees a location is good, she returns and performs the same dance for that same location. Slowly, over hours or even days, a consensus forms. More and more bees begin dancing for one winning location, until the enthusiasm for all other dances fades. When the entire swarm is vibrating with a single, unified dance, the decision is made. The superorganism has voted. We have a collective consciousness that communicates in GPS coordinates and holds democratic votes. But where does this advanced civilization live? The hive itself is a miracle of engineering and mathematics. It's a factory, a fortress, and a climate-controlled nursery all built by an army of architects that literally sweat the building materials from their own bodies. Let's talk about the hexagon. Why not circles or squares? Bees instinctively understand advanced mathematics. The hexagon is the most efficient shape possible. It uses the absolute minimum amount of material to hold the absolute maximum amount of honey. It creates a structure with perfect strength zero wasted space, and perfect tiling. 
But where does the material come from? Bees make it. Young worker bees have special glands on their abdomens. They gorge themselves on honey, and over a 24-hour period, their bodies convert that sugar into tiny, scale-like flakes of wax, which they sweat out from between their abdominal plates. They then chew this wax, mixing it with enzymes, to make it pliable. It takes about eight pounds of honey consumed by the bees to produce just one pound of wax. They are building their entire city by consuming the profits of their labor. This city is not just a storage facility. It is a living, breathing creature. The hive must maintain a constant, precise temperature. The brood, the developing baby bees, must be kept at a perfect 95 degrees Fahrenheit or 35 degrees Celsius, regardless of the weather outside. How do they do this? They become a living HVAC system. If it's too cold, bees cluster around the brood cells and vibrate their powerful wing muscles, detached from their wings, to generate heat. They shiver in unison, turning the colony into a furnace. If it's too hot, they initiate evaporative cooling. Foragers stop collecting nectar and start collecting water. They spread this water in thin films across the honeycomb, while other bees line up at the entrance and fan their wings in a coordinated one-way airflow, pulling air through the hive like a turbine. They are literally running a biological air conditioner. This is homeostasis, not of an individual, but of the superorganism. The brutal efficiency of the hive is most clear when you look at the individuals. A bee's life is a predetermined career path based entirely on its age. It's called age polyethism. When a female worker is born, her first job is cleaning. She is a janitor, cleaning the cells for the next eggs. After a few days, her glands develop, and she is promoted to nurse, responsible for feeding the larvae. A few days later, her wax glands activate, and she becomes an architect, building and repairing the comb. After that, she is promoted to guard, a soldier stationed at the entrance, challenging every bee that tries to enter, ready to die, defending the hive. Finally, in the last phase of her life, she is promoted to the most dangerous job of all, forager. She will spend her last few weeks flying thousands of miles, risking predation, exhaustion, and weather, all to bring back nectar. The colony sends its oldest, most expendable members to do the high-risk work. And what about the males, the drones, their existence is perhaps the most tragic and bizarre. Drones are larger, have no stinger, and do zero work in the hive. They cannot build, clean, or feed themselves. Their entire existence is subsidized by their sisters who feed them. Their only purpose is to mate. On sunny afternoons, they fly to drone congregation areas, waiting for a virgin queen to fly by. The few that successfully mate with a queen do so in midair. The act is so explosive that their reproductive organs are ripped from their bodies and they fall to their deaths. This is their one and only function. But what about the thousands of drones who fail, who never mate? Their fate is just as grim. When autumn arrives and resources become scarce, the female workers make a cold, hard, calculation. The drones are now useless resource drains. The guards block them from re-entering the hive, and the workers systematically drag them out, kicking and screaming, and leave them outside to starve or freeze. It is not cruelty. It is the cold, brilliant, brutal logic of the superorganism. The colony is all that matters. From democratic debate to architectural genius, from climate control to the brutal sacrifice of the individual, the beehive is not just a collection of insects. It is a single, complex intelligence, a biological machine dedicated to one thing, its own survival. The individual bee is just a gear in that machine. So, what hidden secret of the bees shocked you the most? The fact that the queen is a slave? The GPS-like waggle dance? or the brutal democratic execution of the drones? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below.
If you want to uncover more hidden truths of the animal kingdom, hit that like button, share this video, and subscribe for more.